we have acute and chronic rhinosinusitis and then within the chronic uh, disease we differentiate uh, broadly between those without and with nasal polyps. This is a sort of endoscopic sign which you see inside the nose. It means obstruction for the patient's loss of smell versus the others without nasal polyps which do suffer more from a headache. Within these groups, um, so as nasal polyps, in chronic rhinosinusitis with nasal polyps, you do have subgroups and we realize that by um, for example, the response to treatment. This is different in populations. The likelihood of getting asthma is different between populations. So to figure out what is behind these differences, you have to go a step deeper into the mucosa to understand why there are these differences. So endotypes is trying to go at the level of pathomechanisms. What exactly is happening in the mucosa how is this pathomechanism different from another one, although the clinical picture is very much alike? So on the clinical picture alone, CT scan, endoscopy, you cannot find differences, whereas on the level of the cytokines, mediators, you can find differences. So far we have figured out by taking biopsies, by looking into nasal secretions, that we can differentiate these diseases, these endotypes also. However, we do need marker which are much easier to approach, such as serum markers, something you measure in serum, you can send to a lab, everybody can take the blood, everybody can work with these mediators or with these biomarkers then. And that's something where we are not strong at the moment. We are in the face of looking for those, such biomarkers, hopefully finding them, we have several candidates, but then we still need to validate them, we still need to show that they're really of clinical relevance, otherwise they will be useless. So what do we want with endotypes? We want to predict prognosis of patients. Will they get comorbid asthma? Will they get recurrence of disease after surgery? And also, we want to define those patients who respond positively to the new biologics. These are different questions and maybe we need a whole range of biomarkers for whatever question we have for a specific drug, for a specific situation, a specific question. Uh, and that's where there's a lot of work to do in the next years. Guidelines anyway are a little bit late um, because until they are done and made, there's a lot of work, two or three years are gone and until they are published and, and read. So we always are a little bit behind times, but for the moment I would still say yes. The reason is that none of these new biologics yet has an indication for nasal polyposis. They are all indicated if they are for asthma, severe asthma, and we just use them for nasal polyposis, but there's not a single one with the indication of nasal polyps yet. Once that comes, I'm sure it will immediately go into the guidelines, but at the moment, this is not the case.